you know, for all of our positive attributes, Americans can fall into this trap of thinking that we are the center of the universe and that everybody wants to be like the United States, obviously, and, and uh, that everything's the same as it is, uh, same around the world that it is here. And, and in fact, we know that's not true. And, and we especially need to be sensitive to that in the area of public relations when expanding into international markets. So let's talk for a few minutes today about what we can do to manage international media relations in particular in the field of public relations. If we're looking at expanding into different uh, international markets or different countries, then we need to be sensitive to, to some things and, and have certain things on, on the forefront of our mind. So let's take a look at some things we need to, to bear in mind. First of all, we have to develop some intercultural competence if we're going to uh, interact with others in different countries, just period, as people in general, but certainly as public relations people, if we're trying to reach an audience and, and develop a relationship with the public in another country, we certainly need to develop some skills around the area of intercultural communication competence. So um, to do that, first and foremost, we've got to get to know the culture. We can't just assume that everybody's like us. They're not. And we can't just assume that every culture is the same. It's not. And certainly uh, there's some uniqueness to every culture. And uh, so we need to get to know that culture. We need to, 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 to really be sensitive to the fact that there are differences in cultures. And the, it's not a matter of better or worse, but just a matter of different. The different, different cultures are different. It's not that they are, ours is better or worse or theirs is better or worse. They're just different. We need to be aware of that and we need to get to know the culture intimately of whatever culture we're going to be trying to reach. We need to be alert to local issues. We need to understand what's happening in that part of the world, in that community, whatever community it is we're trying to reach. We need to be aware of what's happening in that community. At that moment, we need to keep up with news that's going on there. We need to connect locally with what's with what's happening in that specific community and be aware of, of what issues they may be sensitive to, not just you know culturally in a broad sense, but specifically. What's happening in that community? What's the news in that area? And what's on the mind of the, the public and the people that are living there? We need to uh, think global and act local, as the saying goes, right? We need to think global, but act local. What we mean by that is we have to identify and pursue organizational interests, of course. We're there for a reason. We're there to, to pursue certain goals organizationally, and we want that to be consistent across the organization. Um, we don't want to have different standards and don't have you know different goals. We want to have singular goals both for ourselves as an organization and hopefully also those that mesh with, of course, that that community. So we want to think globally in that regard, but we want to act locally. We need to understand and abide by the local cultural norms and be sensitive to those things as we've discussed, as I've mentioned now uh, several times. We've got to be sensitive to what are those local cultural norms? How is it going to be impacted by what we're doing? And uh, and so we want to, you know, not necessarily just give up on all of our organizational goals. If we can't meet our goals in that area, then we probably shouldn't be in that community, in that, in that locality. But if we feel like we can achieve our organizational goals and find some areas of overlap and mesh with that local community, that's great. Then we also need to consider what are the local cultural norms and act locally, uh, behave in a way that's responsible to that local community. Finally, we need to, as they, as they say, stop, look, and listen, right? Stop, look, and listen. To develop international or intercultural competence, we need to stop, look, and listen. What that means is first we need to stop. Stop and read about the country. Get to know that country. Become familiar with whatever, not just country, but locality we're going to be working in. What are their cultural norms? What are their beliefs? What's the population like? What are the demographics? What are the, all these things? We need to just stop instead of jumping in with both feet it's best to stop do our research read about that that country about that area and and really dig into to develop that intercultural confidence we also need to look then look at the material available from our marketing colleagues hopefully if within your organization they've probably done some market research to identify this as a as a plausible uh, area for you to pursue as an organization so uh, what do your marketing people have to say? Look at those materials that are available from them. Look at what you can find um, from other other uh, um, areas of the organization who may have already been digging into this area, into this locality, and find out what they can see. So we need to stop and read about the country in general, just get to know it in general. Then look at the material available, and then finally listen. Listen to those with in-country experience and expertise in particular. People who've lived there, people who've worked there, people within your organization who've spent time in that area. We need to listen to them. They have valuable insider knowledge and, and, uh, and firsthand experience and expertise in that area. So stop, look, and listen before we jump into these areas, before we 
just start throwing out ideas to see what sticks. Stop, read the, read about the country, do your research, look at the material available from other areas within the organization, and listen to those with in-country experience and expertise. We can also think then about uh, some tips for international media relations, specifically just some general general tips, things to keep in mind. Um, first and foremost, get help from the locals. You know, if there's a, if there's a local public relations agency there, a local media relations agency in that area, t tap into that resource. You know, if you if you feel like you can develop a, a comfortable relationship with them, by all means, get help from the locals. Again, these people have intimate knowledge of that area and of the publics and can provide a lot of really valuable insight. Don't just assume you know everything. Get help from the locals and and get some boots on the ground there. Get get help from people who live in that area. Uh, study a globe. This may sound silly, but uh, Americans in particular, again, we have this kind of distorted view about, you know, the United States is a big country and it is a big, big country, but it's not the biggest in the world. And there are other areas, you know, people expanding into different countries may not have an idea of how diverse these countries are, how large they are. A map is not going to provide a fair uh, representation, them, especially the maps we, we largely use here in the United States are based on an antiquated um, uh, format. And, and so they don't really represent the scale of places, but a globe will give you that scale of how long is it going to take for things to travel from this country to that one? And how far apart are people in this country and how far are they from different areas of the world? Get a globe so you have a really accurate idea of where it is geographically that you're going to be working, how that fits into relationship with other places and, and all those types of things. So study a globe, get to know that place on a globe, get to know the history of that area. What, what is their history as a, as a, as a community, as a country? And again, this is one of those areas in the United States. We tend to think of history as, wow, two, we've been a country for, you know, over 200 years now. That's a long time. That's a drop in the bucket for many, many cultures. Their history extends back thousands of years. And, and so our history as a country is relatively short and we have a different perspective on things like history. So we need to get to know the history of that community, of that area, and not just their own history, but how they view the world. What is their perception of the world? They may have a different perception on things like World War II. You know, they may have a different, have had a different experience with that and things. So we need to get to know the history of that community and, and how they relate to the history that, that maybe we have, have come to know and perceive. We need to meet the people. We got to get out there. We get to know, uh, the, the people that we're going to be, uh, interacting with, especially if you're talking about a, a, a countrywide basis. As, as you're probably aware, if you're, if you're from the United States, if you're here in the United States, there, you know, we're one country, but there are a lot of different types of people, especially, you know, you could just divide it geographically. For example, when you go to the Midwest, you get one style of person, maybe on the East coast is different than the West coast and so forth. And then every community is of course different. And the same is true in other countries. We can't just assume that, uh, that because we've met one person from that country, we know what everybody there is like. We need to get to know those people, get to know, you know, what the differences are and what kind of diversity they have and in, in not just their not just their genetic makeup, but their, their ways of thinking, their consumer habits, their, their, uh, the way they value different things in life, just in general. We need to get to know these things about the community. And the way to do that is to get out there and meet the people. Don't just make assumptions about, you know, well, if you're from this country, you must all be the same. We know that's not true here. So it, it won't be true in other countries either. We need to learn the language. Again, we tend to assume, and, and, you know, a lot of people around the world do speak English and, and it's, you know, a very well-known language around the world. So we just assume that they'll understand English and we'll have the same understanding of that English. But first of all, that's not always the case. People have different perceptions of English and, and whether or not they even know it. And then secondly, it's also just polite when, when, when you're going to, to, to be a part of a different community, it's, a, it's polite to learn their language. So get to know the language, get to know the intimacies and the intricacies of their language. A lot of this is tied together. If we, if we rely on locals, that'll help a lot. We can learn the language um, from them and get to know, you know, what are some, maybe some taboo words and, and uh, things like that, that we should avoid. And just in general, what's the nature of the language there, but language is so critically important. Um, that it's that it's such a critical step to relating to those people. It also signifies um, something very, very special. When you take the time to learn the language of a people, you as a person and you as an organization, start learning that language and providing things in their native language and in their home language, it really signifies to them that you are taking that step to become a part of their community and not just expecting them to buy your product or your service just because, right? So learn the language, take the time to learn the language. If you're going to be a part of that community, a part of that, a part of that culture and a part of that country, 
take the time to learn the language and really understand the importance of that. And then avoid unforced errors. Again, some of this comes back to getting to know the history, getting to know the people. But what are some of the customs there that are important, the, the things that we can avoid, these unforced errors, right, of, uh, uh, of just silly things that we would know if we got to know this culture, things that we could avoid doing. Could we avoid offending somebody by giving them a particular gift that's considered um, impolite in that in that country, in that culture? Um, can we can we avoid these kind of unforced errors? And again, this comes back in many ways to accepting assistance and guidance from those who know that culture, who know that area, and can can help um, lead you through that, can can serve as a guide for those things to help you avoid those types of unforced errors. There are going to be lots of issues expanding into a, a global market. But we don't want to add to that difficulty by doing things that, that could easily be avoided, making those mistakes that are really those kind of unforced errors. Let's spend a few minutes talking about some of the global trends that we see in, in media habits and, and uh, that relate to media relations. This information is from the Reuters Institute's 2020 Digital News Report. And uh, so we want to take a look at the, some of the findings from that report. Um, so first of all, we, we know that uh, digital uh, use is up uh, worldwide. That's not surprising. People are getting their news digitally. Traditional formats are struggling a little bit. Um, this was uh, enhanced by the pandemic, of course, when it was hard to to uh, produce those more traditional, you know, physical copies of media um, and and deliver them. So digital use um, was on the rise, especially before that, but also especially as a result of the pandemic. Then people have just become accustomed to to gaining their information digitally. We also see an uptick in the amount of local news that people are interested in and are consuming. Of course, people want worldwide and, and, and nationwide news, but, uh, but they're also have become very much interested in local news sources. We're seeing an uptick in the, um, the use of, uh, and, and adherence to local news by consumers as well. And then we're seeing, especially in, among younger generations, an uptick in the amount of news and information gained from social media, of course. And so um, not only are people using digital sources like like websites and blogs and things more, but, but we're seeing more use of social media as a news source among younger generations. If we look across the, the globe a little bit and some of the different uh, uh, geographic areas, we, we see that in the United States, for example, we see um, the emphasis on direct connection. Um, and and uh, so more personal connection using things resources like email and and things like that to directly connect with consumers as opposed to just a, a broad message that you send out across all the airwaves you know advertisers and 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 news information organizations are trying to find ways to connect directly and specifically with a consumer and that's that's become an important aspect of news delivery in the United States in Asia we see things that uh, that point toward the use of digital and and mobile devices to, to gain news so most you know the vast majority of news in asian markets is going to be consumed digitally and probably through some mobile device so if we're looking at expanding into a market that's in in that part of the world then we need to understand that, that we're going to need to enhance our our mobile operations and our mobile apps and things and especially through social media and but digital formats in general are particularly on the rise in those parts of the world and then finally, for example, in Europe, we see that there's a real emphasis on ethics of journalism and and the avoidance of impropriety and fake news and things like that in in particular, and also on cybersecurity. The, the, the idea of, of is, is this news safe and is it is it accurate and is it secure coming to me in a, in a secure way? And uh, so we see an emphasis on those kinds of areas in Europe. So as you can see, Things are not the same all over the world. There are some trends that are that are on the uptick globally, but there are also areas that we need to be aware of uh, for different uh, different parts of the world. And and as we dive in more specifically to a particular part of the world into specific countries or communities, then those uh, differences are going to grow even uh, more clear to us. So in general, we see that. Um, you know, much like snowflakes, there are no two alike, right? No two media markets are alike and no two media relations efforts are going to be alike. Depending on the culture that we're looking at and the country we're, and the part of the world we're working in, our media relations efforts need to be tailored to that. So we need to balance this idea of the global um, organizational goals that we have. And are we, is this going to help us achieve those? But at the same time, um, you know, finding a way to, to reach those particular markets in a way that is as unique as those cultures themselves. 
hopefully this gives you a little taste of the idea of some of the things we need to consider when looking at expanding into an international market via media relations and public relations and some of the considerations. There's so much to this, of course, anytime you expand into a new market. But, uh, but hopefully this gives you at least the opening idea of what all might be involved if your organization were to take that leap and jump into an international market.